Tonight on Super Size vs. Super Skinny, large helpings of tension as a portion packing beauty queen. I can't believe you don't have any food all day. Swaps diets with a super skinny tea addict. That tastes horrible. It's water. Our super sizer heads stateside for a stark lesson on the headache obesity can bring. You know, deep in my heart, there's a part of me that still blames myself for it. Emma Wolf continues her investigation into eating disorders, meeting a woman who's reportedly the world's thinnest. I didn't think that anything was wrong until it was too late. And in Las Vegas, Dr. Christian discovers the tiny tube that's the latest in bariatric care. I can see the staples from our original surgery right there. Yeah. I'm coming out now. Over 70% of adults in England believe they're eating a diet that's quite healthy. Yet, shockingly, 22% of our diet is fat-filled or sugar-laden foods, when it should be only 8%. On top of that, the number of people in the UK diagnosed with eating disorders has increased by 15% since 2000. It's time to rethink our attitudes to food, and Dr Christian's getting tough at his feeding clinic. I've brought together 16 people with some truly terrible eating habits. By pairing them up and getting them to swap diets in my feeding clinic, I'm hoping this is going to be just the tonic they need to turn their lives around. OK, Charlene, come on forward. I'm going to pair you with... with Mick, then. Hello. Hello, pleased to meet you. Angie. <laughs> You're big. I know, you're very tiny. What do you eat? A lot. Big meals. I drink about 25 cups of tea a day. Oh, my gosh. With three su uh, five sugars. Five sugars? Do you have any biscuits with it? <laughs> no, nope, nothing at all during the day. Well, I'm really embarrassed to give you my food. Big portions, big, very big portions. So, I, I think I'm in trouble. Yeah. He drinks 25 cups of tea a day with five sugars in each one. That's crazy. It's like over 100 teaspoons of sugar a day. <laughs> when I found out what size portions Charlene takes, it really, really scared me. And to go from small to extra, extra large, oh, I'm terrified. Charlene is the queen of massive portions, whereas Biker Mick survives on just one meal a day and endless cups of tea with sugar. I'm hoping that their time in the feeding clinic will show them just how extreme their diets really are. Mother of one, Charlene, tips the scales at 22 stone 3 pounds, and at just 24 years old, she's already morbidly obese. Her weight problems began when she was young. I had some, like, family problems when I was about 12, I think, and then I started comfort eating then. I got bullied because of it, so I ate more, and then when I was getting bullied, I was just, it was just a, a vicious circle. I'd get bullied, eat more, and then because I was getting bigger, I'd get bullied more. It was horrible. The overeating has carried on into adulthood. Charlene's idea of heaven is Chinese takeaway. I'd probably order some chicken balls. Boiled rice, beef with mushrooms, spare ribs, chow mein, chips. After a slap-up meal, she doesn't stop. If we have our dinner about five o'clock, then about nine o'clock I'll probably get a bit hungry again, so I'll eat the Chinese that we had earlier. <laughs> Huge portions and snacking are Charlene's biggest weakness. But three years ago, she had a daughter, Maisie, and the experience has made her determined to lose the pounds so she can be a better mother. It doesn't work, Maisie. This is why I need to be slim. We went to a theme park not very long ago and she wanted me to go on a ride with her, but I just couldn't because there was nowhere I could have fitted on it. My friend had to go with her and it was horrible that I had to stand and watch her go around with my friend. <laughs> Charlene also dreams of having another baby, but she's frightened. I had a really awful pregnancy and birth and the labour went horribly wrong and it was all to do because of, of my weight, I was at high risk. Charlene has used her size as a way of getting into beauty pageants and in fact last year she won an award in Miss British Beauty Curve, 
But whilst pageants might be fun, Charlene's grand Joan knows that losing weight is crucial for her long-term health. I'm a diabetic and I wouldn't want Charlene to get what I've got because it's not nice. I feel like if I don't change my habits now, then I'm just going to get bigger and bigger and I'm going to be unhappy. Whilst Charlene's big helpings have seen her pile on the pounds, our super skinny's given up on proper portions. 56-year-old Mick weighs in at just 7 stone 8 pounds with a body mass index of 18.1. He's underweight and his puny looks make him stand out in all the wrong ways from his mates. Because Mick is a biker. Passionate about life on the road. Even if he is the tiniest one there. All my biker friends are all bigger than me. They do laugh at me, but... Then I laugh at them sometimes by having a big beer gut. Who's better off? I can see me toes, you can't. Born to be Behind the laughter, Mick wishes things were different. I would love to put on a bit more weight. It would feel better on the bike and it make me feel better in myself. But Mick's chances of getting beefier are slim if he doesn't change his ways because his daily diet is extraordinary. I get up in the morning, uh, just a cup of tea with five sugars. Don't eat nothing during the day whatsoever until late evening. And even then, it may just be a quick cheese and tomato sandwich. That'll do me for 24 hours. Mick downs an astonishing 25 cups of tea every day and he puts five sugars in each one. I can't drink tea without sugar. I've lived with it for, since I was 12, 13 years old. I'm now 56 and still the same weight and waist size. Mick's now been surviving on one tiny meal a day plus oceans of sweet tea for nearly 40 years. His new wife, Annette, would like that to change. I try and encourage Mick to eat a little bit healthier but and, and have less sugar, but so it's, it's falling on deaf ears, I'm afraid. Fueled by sugary tea during the day, Mick's convinced himself he can't eat. I like food, but I just don't need food. My stomach just don't want to know. Soon, Mick will see if tackling Charlene's meals in the feeding clinic can persuade him to down fewer cuppers and start eating sensibly. But first, Dr Christian has some shock treatment for Charlene. He's sending her to America to see what her future might hold if she doesn't change her ways. Charlene's heading for Peoria, Illinois, in America's Midwest, for a taste of the extra, extra large way of life. My name is Melissa Bushnell. I'm 38, and I weigh 32 stones, 4 pounds. Melissa lives with Mike, her husband of 16 years. She's been overweight all her adult life and believes her problems began with a difficult childhood. In my home, as a child, food wasn't always available. So when I was somewhere that there was food, I tended to just eat and eat, you know, like there was no tomorrow. When there was food, it became very much a comfort for me. I'm definitely a food addict. Melissa has developed weight-related health problems, which are serious and distressing. My back hurts pretty much constantly, and my knees tend to just give out. I literally just cry when I get out of bed. The pain is so great. Some days I just, I just want to give up. I mean, it's tough watching her be in so much pain. It really is. I mean, I. I want to be a mom. My, my greatest achievement in life would, would be to be a mother. And obviously, at my weight right now, I would not even consider becoming pregnant. There's just too many health risks. Melissa's longing for a child is compounded by a miscarriage she suffered in 2004 and the guilt she feels. I can say that I don't blame myself, but I, I do. You know, deep in my heart, there's a part of me that still blames myself for it. 
I was so unhealthy when I got pregnant. I was smoking and I wasn't taking care of my diabetes at all. Each year, she and Mike mark the anniversary of when their daughter would have been born. Baby girl, we know you're in heaven with mom and grandma, grandpa, and we love you. We'll see you again someday. Charlene's reflecting on her role as a mum as it's her first big trip away from daughter Maisie. She's determined to stay positive. Yeah, I think it would definitely be worth it. I'm sure Maisie will be very happy when she's got a slim mummy that can run around with her. What's your name? Charlene. Oh, nice to meet Hello. you. Hi. Thanks for coming over. <laughs> the women start by swapping life stories. When I was your age, I was probably, I was about 250 pounds, which I guess is about 17 or 18 stone. I'm heavier than that now, so yeah. that, like, it does worry me that I'm so big already. I've got um, a little girl called Maisie. Oh. She's three. Oh, that's beautiful. We haven't had a family of our own yet, so... I'm hoping to lose enough weight that we can either adopt or, you know, yeah. have a child on our own. So do you have any health problems? Not at the moment. That's awesome. Melissa wants Charlene to realize how her health may be jeopardized if she doesn't change. Melissa already relies on an insulin pump for her diabetes and a host of other medications. This is my drug box. This is a, a diabetes pill. And then I have a high blood pressure pill, a thyroid pill, a water pill that kind of helps keep the fluid off me. And then I have uh, the broken up one is for inflammatory, like for your joints and a cholesterol pill. All these things pretty much have to do with my weight. I'm happier than she was when she was my age. So I'm gonna be, if I carry on, I'm gonna be happier than what she is now. So I'll need all of the stuff that she's got. I've just told myself that I'm not going to have another baby until I've lost weight because when I was pregnant with Maze, loads of stuff went wrong and I almost died. So I, that's why I'm really scared about doing it again. So I just want to make sure that I'm, ha I'm smaller and healthier. And it's something that I really, really want. I want to be a mom so bad. I just, that's the greatest desire of my heart. That's what the one thing that I always wanted was to have kids. And if I couldn't have Maisie, I'd be, I'd be really, really sad. I think for a long time I just got complacent, but now it's time to fight back and say, you know what, I don't have to accept this. This does not have to be my life and it surely does not have to be yours, you know. Twenty-four-year-old Charlene weighs a supersized 22 stone three. She's traveled to America's Midwest to see what her future could be if she doesn't act soon. We'll have a good time, we'll have a good swim. Her US hostess is Melissa, who's over 32 stone. Melissa is trying to lose weight and improve her health to prepare for having a baby. Part of her exercise plan is Aqua Tai Chi. Water provides support for people with back and joint problems like Melissa. My heart rate will start, I'm like, yeah, I'm burning calories, I'm burning calories. And it's better than being on land and running on the treadmill so you feel like you're gonna fall off, you know? As the two compare notes, Dr. Christian is en route to Peoria to meet them, hoping they've clicked. I've paired Charlene and Melissa together for really one thing that they have in common, and that is children. Melissa would love to have children, Charlene would love to have another, but for both of them, their weight is holding them back. Just as he hoped, the desire for children is bonding the women. I just know I want to be a mommy no matter how it happens, and, you know, Part of that is that I know I have to lose weight so that I'm healthy enough to care for a child. For Charlene, longing for a second child, it could be a timely message. And Dr. Christian's come to make sure she gets it. Hello. Hi. <laughs> How are you, Charlene? Hello. Nice to see you. Hi, Melissa. Nice to meet you. I'm Christian, the strange doctor from England. <laughs> Dr. Christian wants to understand how Melissa's experience of miscarriage is affecting her. I was not taking good care of myself, and I was taking care of my mom. She was dying at the time, 
with liver failure, and so I was taking care of her when I got pregnant, and I was taking care of someone else when I should have been taking care of myself, and I was so happy, you know, to find out I was pregnant three days after Christmas, and then to lose the baby was just the most awful thing in my life. I don't think we can say that your miscarriage was a result of your weight. Right. I don't think that would be fair at all. But there is a very important message here, and that is pregnancies when you are obese or overweight are so much harder. So that's why it's really important that you guys are working hard at this. If I can help her to not get to where I am when she's my age, mm. then my job is done. Charlene's trip to the US is at a close, and it's made a big impression. Yeah, definitely going to make some changes. This is the most positive that I've been about losing weight, and this has helped me, and this is always going to stick in my mind meeting Melissa. Back in the UK, it's time to see if Charlene can put the lessons of her visit to Melissa into practice in Dr Christian's feeding clinic. There, she'll swap diets with Mick, the biker. At just seven stone eight, Mick survives almost entirely on sugary tea. He's underweight and his diet could have serious consequences. I mean, looking through your food diary, I have to say, I, I, I wondered if there'd been a mistake. Because you just live on tea, it's yeah. all you live on. I mean, you're getting through, what, 25, 30 cups of tea a day? Easy. I only go by what my stomach tells me. If it wasn't hungry, then I just carried on as normal. You, you're getting about 2,400 or so calories a day, but 2,000 of those 2,400 calories is just from the sugar you're putting in your tea. That's phenomenal. I've never seen that before in anyone's diet. Now, you've got to find 2,000 calories in food and not in sugar in tea anymore. I'm more than happy to give this a try, Good. 100%. Go for it. Nice to see you, Thank mate. Thank you very nice much. much. Bye Thank bye. you. Bye. While Mick relies on sugar for calories, Charlene turns to big portions and snacking. Her daily intake of over 3,000 calories has left her with a body mass index of 48.6, when it should be under 25. So I last saw you in America. Have you made any changes since you got back? Yeah, definitely. What have you done? I've cut down on snacking. Good. <laughs> I've tried to have smaller portions. Your risk of developing diabetes currently is about 80 times higher. Every pound that you lose will bring that risk down. I think you're going to find it quite hard work. <laughs> I'm afraid to say that now, but remember, it is all for the greater good. Yeah. Okay, nice Thank to see you, Charlene. Better luck. OK, bye-bye. Bye. The diet swap begins with breakfast. Mick's morning quota of seven sugary teas is a challenge for Charlene. She doesn't usually drink tea at all. Did I get hungry? No. Nope. As long as I have me tea with me five sugars. Mick has a large bowl of sweetened cornflakes and a thick slice of buttered toast. This is 35 teaspoons of sugars right here. After just a few mouthfuls of cereal, Mick's in trouble. I mean, I'm struggling through this at the moment. Charlene's not happy with her breakfast either. I actually feel a little bit sick just because it's so sugary. Are you going to try any of the toast? I'm absolutely full. You're full, or full already, it's crazy. What have eaten this morning? will do me until tomorrow night. Charlene downs five full mugs of tea before giving up. I can't believe that he has that much sugar. Like, that's crazy. I can't believe he's, he's not got diabetes or he's, unwe he's not unwell. Dinner time brings Charlene another seven sugary teas. For Mick, there's a mammoth plateful of lasagna with half a garlic and cheese baguette. I don't think I can. What, not even any of the lasagna? I'm just not hungry. I can't believe you don't have any food all day. I'm, I'm fighting to even take a bite of it.
I can't, can't eat this. This will make me ill. My stomach's rejecting it. And what about your garlic bread? After nearly 40 years of not eating properly, it seems Mick's just not able to stomach the idea of eating a full meal. Just can't eat no more. My, my stomach's just not allowing me. I'm done now. I can't drink any more. Charlene's persistence has got her through three mugs of tea, but it's been a long and difficult day, and she's not happy with Mick. I think he had, like, three or four spoonfuls of lasagna and a tiny little bite of this garlic bread. I just don't think he was trying. I really want to try and put on weight, but it just seems to be a brick wall at the moment that's stopping me. My stomach is telling me I'm full, I don't need food. Dr Christian's very concerned by Mick's failure to eat. He steps in with shock tactics in the hope they'll make him try. I've worked out what you get through in a year. 154 kilos of sugar in a year. This is just what you're putting in your cups of tea, mate. Does that shock you? Yes, it does. This sugar makes up 80% of the total calories in your diet that you're getting. Nutritionally, what's this giving you? Not a lot. Seriously, not a lot. Nothing at all. I mean, yeah, there's energy in there. It's a carbohydrate, isn't there? Vitamin, mineral, nutrient, protein, anything that's to build you, repair you? It's nil. Nil is the answer. I'm going to change. I've got to change. It's not good for me, and this is a proof. The 40 million visitors who come here to Las Vegas every year come for the entertainment, the gambling, the food, and the excess. But away from the bright lights and casinos of Las Vegas, another business is booming. Last year, there was a reported 80% rise in weight loss surgery, with Sin City fast becoming the go-to destination for bariatric procedures. As Las Vegas becomes America's capital for bariatric surgery, more and more techniques are being tried and tested to make surgery and recovery times quicker and life generally easier for the patients. With a near doubling of business over the last year, here at Blossom Bariatrics on the outskirts of Vegas, they're pioneering a new way of checking up after a lap band has been fitted or after a gastric bypass. 41-year-old Bridget is visiting the clinic to undergo this groundbreaking procedure that will see how her stomach is faring after major weight loss surgery. So, Bridget, you're coming in to have what done today? I'm coming in to have a TNE done. Uh, TNE, transnasal endoscopy. Yeah. It's a mm -hmm. little tube up the nose, down into your tummy. To see how things are doing in there, making mm. sure I don't have any ulcers. Are you worried about it? Oh, yeah, I'm nervous about it. OK, so. I'll hold your hand, <laughs> all right? Ten years ago, Bridget weighed 22 stone, which was dangerously affecting her health. I was borderline uh, diabetes. Um, I had severe feet and knee pain where I was getting injections. After opting for gastric bypass surgery in which her stomach was stapled, restricting the volume of food she could eat, she managed to shed a massive 10 stone in just one year. It was a good thing for you then, the bypass? I, I think haven't so. Haven't put the weight back on? <laughs> I think so. No, no, I haven't put the weight back on, but it takes work. The surgeries are only a tool, and you do have to commit to learning a new healthy lifestyle habit. Dr. Thomas Umbach is one of the USA's leading figures in bariatric surgery and founder of Blossom Bariatrics. Today, he's using the latest generation of miniature cable cameras to examine Bridget's previous surgery and the condition of her stomach by threading it down her nose. Uh, yeah. Same size as your straw. OK. OK? Uh, so what we'll do is we'll sneak in the, the nostril there and we'll drop into the top of the mouth and we'll go down into the esophagus. Okay. OK? 
This aftercare tool will help explore and detect any potential underlying problems, such as ruptures or ulcers. By going through the nose and not through the mouth, the gag reflex and possible nausea is avoided. Yeah, the vocal cords there. Yeah. Its size and flexibility means there's no need for Bridget to be sedated, and she's awake throughout the whole procedure. I want to see. What you're looking at? Well, we're at the bottom of her gastric bypass pouch. Mm -hmm. In fact, you see the staples from her original surgery right there. Yeah. No major ulcers, no major problems. Looks good all the way around. After a relatively painless 12 minutes, Bridget is given the all clear. I'm coming out now. OK, all well done. Hey. How was it. that, Bridget? It was fine. I want coffee. <laughs> <laughs> This procedure really was very simple, actually, wasn't it? So compared to having a proper endoscopy, one of one of those great fixed tubes that you have to swallow, oh, yeah. technology's made this easier for you and a lot easier for the patient. Oh, exactly. Ten years ago, it would have been a tube the size of my thumb, probably. Yeah. And we would have had to have an anesthesiologist here, would have done a hospital. So absolutely, we do it here and it takes five minutes. And obviously all of this technology you need because here in Las Vegas, <laughs> you've got a lot of demand for this sort of thing, right? Yes, we're, we're using it to help our patients, which is what it's all about. Although new technology is making bariatric procedures quicker and more successful, when it comes to weight loss, there's still no substitute for healthy eating. It's the next day at the feeding clinic. Mick has only a glass of fizzy water and three slices of toast to contend with. Charlene's got through 18 mugs of super sweet tea, only to be confronted with eight more. I've had a sugar overload, like, my head hurts so bad, I don't even think I can stomach it. Oh, that tastes horrible. It's just water, fizzy water. Oh, this is torture. That can't be good for you because... It's water, just fizzy. I can't eat no more. I'm beating again. Mick's still struggling, but Charlene's not letting him off the hook. I think you could try a little bit more. Just that tight, it's a tiny little bit. My stomach just don't want to know. Charlene's given the swap her all, but her 23rd cup of sweet tea is one too many. <coughs> I feel really, really, really sick. <laughs> you OK? Yeah. Let's get you a glass of water. Hold on. The fact that his diet has literally made Charlene sick makes Mick realise how hard Charlene has been trying to fulfil the diet swap. Truthfully, I don't think I'm trying as hard as Charlene, but my brain's saying do it, but my stomach is telling me no. I don't think he's trying, and it makes me really, really angry when people get given opportunities like this to get some help and they don't take it. Lunchtime, and Mick needs to show much more commitment to the diet swap. That means making a serious effort with her mega portion of lasagna, chips, two big hunks of cheesy bread, two bags of crisps, and two chocolate biscuit bars. I know what's it'll try, but <laughs> this is frightening me. Because there's so much. Yeah. After three bites of lasagna, one chip, one piece of chocolate and a sip of water, Mick's had enough. I'm absolutely full. My stomach's just not allowing the food to go down. Charlene's been unable to face any tea for the first time in the swap, but she's more frustrated with Mick. He needs to change his mindset that he's here because he wants to be, not because I want him to eat the food. I'm disappointed that Mick just isn't trying hard enough with the diet swap. And most worryingly of all, I don't think he believes that he can do it. Even with Charlene supporting him, he's still resisting. And this doesn't bode well for once he gets back home on his healthy eating plan. The final dinner is Mick's last chance to show he's capable of change. But he's facing an overwhelming portion of kebab, chips, pitta, cake, donuts and sweets. 
Charlene gets her first item of solid food in two days, but she's ambivalent about her sandwich. I actually thought you were just going to give me tea again, so I'm quite excited that there's food there, but I'm not hungry. And the tea is not welcome. I can't even try to drink it just because it, like the thought of it is making me feel ill. <laughs> It seems Mix got the message about replacing sugar with proper food, and for the very first time, he makes a real effort. I feel I'm going to try and change, so I will try and eat. He manages a modest but respectable portion of chips, meat, sauce, and even some fizzy water. I have eaten a bit more than I first come in, but I'm just pushing it and pushing it and pushing it, like I said I would. I just want you to get the most out of it, just like I have been. So I've been pushing you to eat more. You've been doing it for my own good. Mm -hmm. And I needed that push. Yeah. I really did. And without that push, I wouldn't be eating. It's late in the swap, but it is a huge step forward for Mick. And for Charlene, watching him struggle with her big portions and snacks has redoubled her resolve to change. So I'm going to cut out all of my snacks and just have three meals a day, small meals. <laughs> Both going to get there in the end. With the swap complete, Dr Christian hands over the information Mick and Charlene need for healthier eating when they get home. Give it your best, and both of you, best of luck. Thank you. Thank you very much. Charlene's eating plan will give her 2,000 calories a day, around 1,000 less than at present. They'll come from a balance of starchy foods, fruit and veg, low-fat dairy products and lean proteins such as chicken, egg and pulses. Mick's plan provides 2,800 calories a day, which should see him gain around one pound per fortnight. His diet will be made up of the same balanced food groups as Charlene's. He's also allowed occasional fatty or sugary treats, but encouraged to try more nutritious snacks, such as nuts and dried fruit. Mick and Charlene's time in the feeding clinic is over. I have enjoyed my time here and I'm definitely going to cut out my snacks and have smaller portions. Mick has helped me and I'm glad that I was paired with him now. I'm going to cut down on my tea and I'm going to start eating more. Hopefully I can start putting on the weight I want, would like to put on. Here in my end I've got my diet and I'm going to follow 100%. This is my bible for now on. Thank you. Mick and Charlene now have just under two months before they come back to the feeding clinic to step on the scales. Author and journalist Emma Wolfe suffered from anorexia for 10 years. I thought there would be a massive hole in my life when I recovered from anorexia, but there isn't a hole. Everything else just expands to, to fill the gap, um, and it feels wonderful to have finally got rid of the millstone around my neck. One in 20 teenagers are believed to have anorexia, and sadly, out of these, nearly half will battle with the condition for their entire lives. Tonight, Emma is meeting a woman who has never recovered from disordered eating and is reported to be the world's thinnest woman. 40-year-old Valeria Levitin weighs no more than a small child and has been struggling with disordered eating for over 20 years. I was born and raised in Moscow, Russia. I was never a, a, a very fat child, but I was never a slim child. My mother was strict, she was demanding. She didn't want me to struggle with my weight when I grew up, so she wanted me to like control a little bit my eating. When you're always a little controlled about what you eat and how much when you're a child, it sticks with you for the rest of your life. In her teens, Valeria's family moved to America and she believes that being uprooted at a young age may also have contributed to her eating disorder. You want to be accepted and liked by your new peers and, you know, the thin girls are more popular than the girls that are slightly bigger. And so I wanted to be a little slimmer. 
In her early 20s, Valeria took part in a beauty pageant where she gained newfound confidence from being told how great she looked and she became more focused than ever on keeping her weight as low as possible. At the time I was looking healthy to everybody, looking very beautiful, but already I had issues with eating. Where does an eating disorder start and an innocent diet ends? I didn't think that anything was wrong until it was too late. Valeria is very aware of how extreme her look has become. We're not designed to be skeletons. We will all be skeletons at one day, for sure. But uh, we're not supposed to live like skeletons. Being the same is not the greatest uh, feeling in the world uh, because people repulse when it's easy. As a warning to others, Valeria wants to share her story. Today, she's meeting with mental health charity Mindful and a group of parents to give them advice on how to spot the signs of an eating disorder. People think that there is an anorexic look. There is no anorexic look. There is anorexic behavior, which will lead to the anorexic look. So the weight is a mere symptom. It's not the cause or the root of the, of the problem. Mm. How would a parent spot them early signs? Any kind of a obsessive uh, behavior with food, whether it's, you know, all of a sudden they start selecting very carefully or cutting out certain things. How would you suggest a parent approach their child if they were worried about their eating or, you know, suspected that they might have problems? I think it should start much earlier. It should be like part of upbringing, you know, part of healthy upbringing. Not focusing too much, like, you know, on food or appearance. Don't focus on the negative important to tell your children that you know they are the best they are they're good they're smart they're beautiful mm -hmm. the best medicine in the world is prevention whilst Valeria has been telling parents about the dangers of eating disorders Emma Wolf is making her way to meet her for the first time she's intrigued to find out why Valeria is warning others on eating disorders when her own is so deep-rooted and apparent yeah. what is it like to live with the label the thinnest woman in the world I just have no idea I feel really quite mixed between um, fear of meeting her because she's really really not well but also I'm interested and I, I just want to find out what her life is like I just wanted to start by asking, reportedly you're the thinnest woman in the world. What does that label feel like? I don't know who says that and where they got it. Where from. does that come from? I have no idea. I have never stated that. It was never documented. I never went to any kind of competition for it, that's no. for sure. Wherever Valeria goes, she gets stared at. Do you care when people stare at you? I don't know. I we get used to that, but I like to be left alone. Valeria is adamant that her health is improving and she's motivated to get better. Anorexia is purely in your mind when you try to be thin. I don't try to be thin anymore. For you, do you think it's gone too far that you just can't get back to a normal way or do you think that you will gradually? I will gradually. You will? Yeah. You really believe that? Yeah. That the longer you damage your body, then yeah. what, even when you want to become normal, it's difficult. Mm. There is food that I like and there is food that I can eat right now because of my the state where my body is. Despite the fact that Valeria's eating disorder is deeply entrenched, she is working hard to put others off going the same way. Going public, I want to advocate that you don't want to look like me, you don't want to go down that path. Um, I think that's really brave of you. Well, in a way, but, but, because uh, in a way you're using, you're saying my example is correct. to show you. Not to be like me. Yeah. Valeria receives emails from all over the world, from people searching for help and support on how to get better. Yet regrettably, some people aspire to have a body like hers. Unfortunately, a lot of people are asking me for advice, how to be like me and how to lose weight. I just tell them that it's the wrong path to starve yourself and to uh, go to self-destructive behavior that will eventually you know, isolate you, destroy your life, and uh, you'll not be the person that you would want to be. But I'm very proud because I get letters from girls say I would do anything to starve myself. And I looked at you and I realized, you know what? Life is so much more than this five kilos. And I stopped. 
Meeting Valeria has been a very, very emotional experience. It's shocking for anybody to see how far anorexia can go. And so she is helping others as a warning to what eating disorders can do. Absolutely takes her breath away. Just under two months ago, Dr. Christian gave healthy eating plans to Charlene, queen of the mega portion, and Mick, a tea junkie. Today, they're back at the clinic for a progress check. I'm feeling nervous about the way in today, just because I hope it's what I'm expecting. I really do hope I've put on a little bit of weight. With all the hard work I've put into it, Charlene, welcome back. You look very, very well indeed. Thank you. So what's new? I go to the gym every day. Really? <laughs> yeah, sometimes oh. twice a day. Goodness me. And um, I've just been planning my meals. I've started making everything from fresh, and as everyone knows, my favourite food was Chinese, but I've learned how to make a healthy way at home. Portion size? Portion size is cut down a lot. You're not starving hungry all the time? If I get hungry, I just snack on fruit. We talked a bit about when you had Maisie, your first child, and now I think you're a bit nervous about having another, but you would like another. Yeah. Do you think with what you've achieved so far, that confidence is going to come back? Yeah, when I've lost some more weight, I definitely want another baby. Good, I'm pleased. I think you're looking great. I think you've definitely made some changes for the better to your life. Whether or not you've lost any weight, <laughs> we won't yet know, but I'll tell you in a bit. So, Mick, welcome back. It's nice to see you again. You too. It's only been a relatively short time since you were in the feeding clinic, but what changes have you made in that time? I was at, drinking about 25 cups a day. You were? Down to about 10 and 12 a day. Mick, that's good. With only three sugars. That's a big difference, though, to be fair to you. If you haven't been eating enough food, you would have lost more weight. I think weight. I'm eating enough food. You do? I have a pasta salad or tuna salad, then a roll of mid-afternoon, mm -hmm. then my main meal, then snacks of the night time. Is this something you think you can keep up, though, to oh, six definitely. months? Oh, definitely. Good. I'm pleased. Well, very soon you will find out whether it's worked or not. It's time now for Charlene and Mick to compare notes. How are you? Oh, fine, <laughs> thank you. You look really well. So do you. Well, so have you been able to cut down on your tea and your sugar? Twelve cups a day and... Only three sugars. That's really good. Have you cut down on your food? Yeah, definitely. I've cut down. I followed the plan religiously. Well, how are you guys doing? Good to see each other again. Yes. Yeah. You look lovely, doesn't she? she? Yeah, she does. Yeah. So this is the big moment <laughs> when you find out has all the hard work that you may or may not have done, Mick, paid off. <laughs> so I'm going to choose you, Charlene, first. Do you think you've lost weight? I hope so. You hope so. What would you like in an ideal world? Like a stone. Well, you have lost a stone. You actually have lost two stone and two pounds. Oh, my God. Oh, my God, indeed. <laughs> How do you feel about that? Really good. It's Congratulations. really good. What do you think, mate? <laughs> oh, well done. Two stone, two pounds is yeah, phenomenal. And you know how you said your clothes were feeling a little bit looser around the middle? It's because you have lost eight and a half inches from around your tummy. Crazy. Wow. <laughs> That's a lot. Yeah. You've done fantastically. Yeah. Well done. Thank you. Right, so Mick, you've got to um, yeah, my turn. <laughs> match that sort of a standard. Do you think you're gonna do it? I hope I have. That was a bit of a result for you. A bit. That's good then. It's more than good, Mick. You've put on half a stone. Wow. <laughs> half a stone is a huge amount. That's good. In such a short time. So those changes that you made are working. Weight gain is possible. Even if you're a little bit older and more stubborn and drinking gallons and gallons of tea, you can still do it when you have. What do you think, Charlie? Yeah, that's really good. Well done. Thank you. You think you'd do that? You didn't I really, did you? <laughs> I didn't think I could do it. To be honest with you, Charlene, nor did I. <laughs> and he surpassed my expectations, yeah, and that's all I That's good. Well, well, you both actually surpassed my expectations, so I'm very, very pleased. Well done. I was so shocked when Dr Christian said over two stone. I was hoping for a stone. So now that I'm losing weight, hopefully this time next year, I'll be healthy enough to have a child. Because I've gained half a stone, I'm well pleased. I didn't think it was possible. Well, now I know I can gain half a stone, I'm going to carry on and hoping I'm going to get over the stone mark. So watch this space. <laughs>